this is Josh, Tiny Ranch Farmer. I'm in the kitchen today. We're getting ready to process some hogs. I've got uh, four hogs that we need to uh, kill and uh, start processing today and we'll finish up tomorrow. This will be part one of maybe a two or three part video series on uh, how I process a hog and uh, put it in the freezer. I'm not smoking the hog. I'm going to make some sausage. I'm going to uh, make pork chops, tenderloins, and uh, stuff like that. I am in no way claiming to be a butcher or a professional uh, animal slaughterer, but this is how I do it, and uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll all learn a little bit along the way. So stay tuned. This is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Subscribe to the channel, watch me process a hog, put them in the freezer so our family has plenty of grub to eat on uh, probably for at least two years. Uh, Check it out. All right, for our sausage, we uh, we have Legs Old Plantation seasoning. That's what we're going to use here. This is enough for 25 pounds. I've got two bags of that. Uh, 50 pounds of sausage uh, is <laughs> plenty of sausage. We'll have uh, some for the neighbors and friends and family too. Uh, we also have a bag of sage. This is uh, delish sage. Uh, this is for putting into our sausage to make it uh, a little more uh, yummy. I've also got uh, some red peppers that I harvested from the garden and we'll use that to spice up the sausage. So we'll make some sausage spicy, we'll make some sausage not so spicy, and I also have a few other different types of mixes for uh, sausage. So let's get busy, we'll get started on this. This may be a several hour process, we'll try to shrink it down into a 15 minute video, so stay tuned. Watch everything, stay tuned till the end so that you see the finished product and uh, we'll try it out. So nothing like fresh sausage made that day, delicious stuff and we normally will season to taste. So by the end of the day today our tummies should be feeling warm and happy. So what we're using here is a uh, Tilex product. It's actually a, a bathroom type cleaner. Um, and we're going to let that sit on here for a little while and then we'll clean it off with soapy water. But we want to make sure that we kind of sterilize our area. So that, that uh, Tilex product has a very high bleach content. We're also going to bring out our food saver. We're going to give it a once over two, wipe it down good. Um, make sure everything looks good in here. Flip it back. If you're thinking about buying a food saver, uh, this could double as a pretty decent review. Uh, these things are a little quirky sometimes. Um, you have to get used to using them. Uh, when you, you have to be patient. When you first use these things, uh, they can try your patience, but until you get the, uh, the workflow down. Once you get the workflow down, they're pretty easy to use. So, got our cleaned up here. We're going to let it dry. So we got our brand new box of Food Saver uh, Special value pack combo. It's got uh, several different types of uh, bags that we'll use to uh, put our meat in. Let's take a second and talk about the knives that we're going to use. I have an outdoor edge knife that's uh, made for uh, skinning game. It has uh, two different blades on it. Um, this blade is uh, for getting the hide off and then there's a blade here that uh, you use to go up under and split the belly open. Uh, so this is the outdoor edge knife. Uh, I also have my uh, K-Bar, uh, which has just proven to be a great uh, field dressing knife for me. And uh, the I'm going to save the best for last, but I've got a, uh, a nice Victorinox knife here for uh, deboning. Um, and I've got a uh, another just a uh, butcher's grade kitchen knife. Uh, it's a Tramontina. And uh, last but not least, my little uh, $15 warrior right here. See this blade? It's so flexible. Uh, this is mainly what I'll be using to debone and process this uh, meat. This has been the best little knife I've uh, had. The, the most important thing is that these knives need to be extremely sharp um, and 
you don't want to have to stop in the middle of your process to sharpen a knife. Inevitably you will, um, and that's why I have a nice knife sharpener. But uh, we'll go ahead and get everybody nice and sharp. So when we start, uh, if we're field dressing with these two and one gets dull, then we'll just move on to the next knife. Hopefully this will get us through everything we need to do today. All right, now we need to talk knife sharpeners. I have uh, a sh chef's choice uh, knife sharpener. Uh, my wife purchased it on Amazon. It's a chef's choice 151. Very impressed with this knife sharpener. Uh, it's doing the job for me. I don't know that it's like a professional quality deal, uh, but I do know that it does the job for me and it keeps every one of my knives extremely sharp. The butcher's worst enemy is a dull knife. So the first blade we're going to sharpen is our K-Bar. Turn it on. I'm going to run through the medium setting. Now, we're sharp as we need to be for skinning this pig. So my uh, butcher knife, which this is one I use almost daily, needs a little touch up too. So last time I processed a hog, uh, we smoked it. And that video, uh, I'll put a link to it uh, right here. Okay, you can watch that. And I, uh, when I smoked the thing, I was soaking wet the whole time. So this time we're not going to do that. We're going to wear rubber boots. Uh, and I, I have a, I purchased this on Amazon. This is a rubberized uh, butcher's apron. So I'm going to use that to keep myself from being soaking wet and also to protect my clothes and my skin. So it's quite important uh, that parts stay lubricated. I just use a touch of olive oil inside my uh, um, meat grinder here. Um, I'll put my uh, meat grinding wheel together. Um, maybe. There we go. Uh, we'll snap it all in place. And this goes on the uh, KitchenAid uh, professional 5 uh, stand mixer. I'll show you how that goes on, okay? Alright, so it's no secret, this little tab, which I've lubricated pretty well <clears throat> with olive oil, because that's what I like to do, uh, slides in this slot. You tighten down a little tab over here, and we're ready to go. Just that quick and easy. Um, I saw no need to have a specialized uh, sausage grinder for you know using this thing maybe twice a year so I just got the attachment for my uh, KitchenAid stand mixer great investment I found this one on Craigslist uh, I think these things run somewhere around 500 bucks uh, I think I got it for like a hundred on Craigslist uh, it's a good little mixer alright guys so these are our hogs we're gonna go ahead and kill one pull it out we're gonna cut the jugular vein drain the blood and we're going to get it up on our gambrel and start skinning it. <laughs> All right, so we've got our pig on the gator here. We've got our gambrel, uh, which is our little hook to raise him up. We're going to put the pig on the gambrel, raise him up, and uh, go ahead and start gutting the pig. So I had to make my own gambrel. The one that we got is this big, and I needed to make one this big that will hold the pig up. So this will go behind the Achilles tendon on the pig, and we'll raise him up. Got my right hand man with me. Come on over. It ain't everybody that's got a wife that would do this stuff. <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> so I'm going to rinse the pig off really good. Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your 